Oh yeah, the whole LTT stuff. Uh, I, I did the main channel video on that, kind of going over Steve in that. Um, since that video's come out, a whole bunch of revelation, revelations happened with Madison, an ex-employee of LTT coming out, alleging of sexual harassment, um, hostile working conditions, toxic work conditions, all a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so that's interesting and then there was also the secret recording uh after she was let go they held an hr secret recording and uh the it was put on reddit now a lot of people on reddit i didn't comment there because i just didn't want to commenting on reddit's like whoa don't ever do it <laughs> don't be that guy or girl <laughs> and yeah uh Anywho, that's actually the machine in their break room. I took a tour of LTT, and that machine was still there um, and still available to be used. Uh, and so that was actually in the break room. So everything in that recording is probably authentic. And uh, the, th uh, the recording itself wasn't so bad, but towards the end, James, you know, I think Linus stood on, like, the coffee table. was like, attention, we need to talk about some human resources stuff and what to do and, you know, just regular corporate banter. But uh, it was mainly over, like, sexual harassment and those types of things. And then at the end, James pipes in. He's like, Can you dance on that table or just stand on it? That's it. So, um... And I was like, wow, that's a lot to unpack. First off, uh, I come from the business corporate world. I still work in the business corporate world. And I'm just going to tell you, one, there's never been an HR meeting that I thought, hey, I need to bring a recorder to and record. And if I did, I would soon be putting in my resignation, getting the F out of that company because something's up with that if you're recording an HR thing. Two, I would never be like James and think it would be appropriate at the end of an HR thing to tell my boss of all people to dance on a table or just stand there. Wow. That's pretty damning. That whole thing. Woo. So much to unpack there. And there's so much context. This isn't over by a long shot. There's going to be other stuff that pops out here, I think. Uh, as that told me in Linus's response to that. Like, it, you know, that might happen in some businesses. A small business, maybe. But as a, a person that's been a director of a team, when someone makes a comment like that and you're having a serious conversation in the HR type thing, you look at that person straight in the eyes and be like, hey, we need to talk after this is through. The rest of you go ahead and go. And then you pull that person over. And if it's a good friend of yours, you just chew their ass out. If it's not a good friend of her, you say, hey, uh, we need to write you up or you term them there right on the spot. And that's how messed up the LTT situation is. At first, I was like, it's a nothing burger. It's probably just some drama that's happened, whatever. But as I look deeper into this scenario, man, this is probably not the last shoe to fall. It's uh, if it's that bad and that's happening at there, it means that James didn't respect Linus enough or take this seriously enough. Uh, during something that could typically destroy a company because, I mean, at this point, I mean, I don't even know why Madison wouldn't even lawyer up at that point uh, because usually when anything goes in the public domain, it's a huge payout, at least in, in big business. But that's just my two cents on the secret recording. And then as far as the Madison accusations, usually when it comes to sexual harassment like that and a disgruntled employee, the truth usually lies somewhere in between. So there's probably some things she said that's, probably factual and some stuff that's probably not so you know just looking at any uh suits and stuff i've had to handle as a district manager in the past from uh, a big company and yeah that's just that's that's just it yeah and it was just disappointing to see because i do like linus and he is a good guy it's just i don't think he's a very good manager Based on that interaction and just meeting him in general, he's very passive 
And, and I could see how that could be a huge problem, especially when you're managing such a big team. And if they're not giving you that kind of respect for something so serious, uh, there's been probably a, a pretty good history of abuse at the company. Uh, in, in typically, I'm just speaking in general terms here. I don't know for sure. All I know is what I heard on that recording, and it was, it was not good. So that, that's just my take on far of that. Um, uh, it's bad though, guys, because I really, like I said, I, I like Linus and I like LTT. Uh, they're a great entertainment tech channel on YouTube and I don't want anything bad to happen to them. But at the same time, man, they got a clean house. Um, that's just not a way to run a business. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I still, they're not going to just die. But uh, they just went from a $100 million company probably to a $1 million company at the end of this thing. I mean, it's going to be bad. I think they'll survive and get through it, but it's not. there's going to probably be a restructuring at the very least. Usually when something like that, for someone, uh, LTT is big in the YouTube sphere, but not from a business perspective. Um, it, no, it's not that he didn't care. That's a weird... So <laughs> I'm not going to defend Linus here, but it's public speaking is probably not his thing. It's not his bag. We're all introverts. Um, typically, if I have to put on my business cap, I'm not a very nice guy. Um, and I don't think he has a that kind of business cap to put on. It's just not in his bag. And I'd have to say I speak from experience here when I was very young and I remember I hired a friend and then I became his boss. We were equals and then I became his boss. It was very difficult working with him because a lot of times I wouldn't get that same respect. And a lot of these people, I think, coming up, especially like James and probably some of the older people that have been there, they have their on-screen personalities. And having met James in real life, I mean, he always kind of seemed like a douche to me when I met him at LTX. It's just a brief interaction, but still. Um so, I mean, that's a, that's a rough go. It just is. And, you know, we'll see, like I said, I don't know the particulars. I'm sure when it gets investigated, they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, but that's just, a, oh yeah, that's a, a very weird way. And also you got to remember I was, my, was when I worked in a traditional business, it's, it's a different structure from social media. So in a traditional business, the structure goes, hey, you have your regular sub subordinates or, or, you know, plain workers, the peasants, so to speak, that get all the work done. You have your manager. And then usually there's a there's a structure of reporting that goes on and it, it's much less family oriented. And sometimes in small businesses, you can get convoluted and you run into the same problems. And that's what Linus is in. And. Uh, that reporting structure I don't think really exists, especially from what I heard on the thing. I don't know what he was reading off of from an HR standpoint, but it was just not very good jargon to put come out with. So I guess he Googled the wrong thing. I was like, Ugh, gosh, this is rough. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but... Yeah, he'll get through it, but managing creative types is also very difficult. You got to realize most of the guys I've ever managed are analytical and don't really have that much in the emotional side of things. So a lot of times I can be like, hey, this work is bad. Here's where it's not good. Here's where you did do good. Go. And that's really easy. But with a creative type, when someone makes something creative, there's so much objectivity to it. Uh, in, especially in video form where you could be like, well, that's just your opinion that this is bad. And to some people, they might feel it good. So it, it's a whole different thing when you get into that realm. And I don't know how to manage a creative type. That sounds like a freaking nightmare, uh, managing talent. Ugh. I don't even want to think what that that comes with. So I don't envy Linus and, and I've never, you know, I've always thought, man, that's a huge team and a huge responsibility, a lot of mouths to feed. And I know I wouldn't sleep very easy at night knowing that how I perform at work is dependent on whether someone gets paid tomorrow kind of uh, situation. So uh, that's not something I'd ever want to put myself in. That's why I kind of like being a solo or just a one man band. But that's that's my thoughts on the whole LTT situation, how it has evolved. Um, we'll see how it goes, but I don't think it's over by a long shot i imagine you know probably two weeks to a month it'll play out if there's any other 
you know, any other harassments in the past, they'll probably pop up during these things. They usually do if there's like a pattern or maybe it's just a one off incident. You know, I, I hope that's the case. So that's that's my thoughts. But I put all the, like the timestamps like this was just going over mainly the gamers neck of steam thing. And then here is the link to the, the recording here. I'll just put this in chat for y'all. Drama does sell, especially on YouTube. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Like I said, I think I'd do it like on a secondary channel as I don't want to. I don't want to be a drama farmer. <laughs> but these were the two updates that weren't included. A lot of the allegations from Madison. It was about 20 tweets. I went ahead and linked it from Reddit just in case those tweets get taken down because she got like, I imagine a big company would sue her for defamation and or at least pull her in somehow or get her to remove the tweets to, because man we're talking millions of dollars that ltt is going to lose from this whole thing uh, from a financial perspective so but there was a lot of uh, high workload allegations sexual harassment allegations toxic work environment so that's the link from that was that was the first update and then the second updates when someone posted the secret recording from the HR meeting after Madison left with James making the comment you're going to dance on the table or stand on it kind of thing. <laughs> it looks so bad. So that's the stuff for those that really want to dive deep. Hey man, have at it. But yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad. But like I said, it, it'll get through it and uh, we'll see where, where the chips fall. I think they'll do, you know, improve things. It's just going to be probably get a little a bit worse than it before it gets better. But yeah, it de definitely eroded a lot of trust people had. Uh, growing pains, I guess. For me, I never really understood it. Like the really, truly smart people on YouTube that I like look up to there. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a smart way of doing things. It, it, Linus has always been like, I've always thought, hey, he's just too big and that's too much stress for one man to kind of bear. Um, but you look at like Marquez, dude, he has a team of like, I think like 10 or 15 people, pretty cool studio, not nearly as big as Linus from uh, Footprint, like not a huge amount of overhead, but dude, he just kills it, you know? I, I mean, he, he has, he's figured out the game. That's someone I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, Mr. Who's the Boss, uh, you know, going over the pond, so to speak. Uh, he does a really good job, also has a pretty small team. You know, I, I think a half a dozen to a, a dozen people. And he, again, has a good management team. And just when you're that small, you're much more flexible and you can do a lot more stuff. And you can see that a lot in the work product, too. So <laughs> I feel so bad for Taryn from LTT. The G's. <laughs> Yeah, that's so brutal. Yeah, I've never seen anything. Mark has probably has the cleanest reputation out of everybody. Uh, the man's a genius. Like, he's just very soft-spoken from people that met him outside. Just always tends to always say the right thing and have just just a chill dude. You know, always has just right right down the, the line takes. Plays it, plays it cool. Gotta love that, man. Simple and to the point. He's mastered that. So, yeah. You know. And he always seems super chill. 